Let's go ahead and witch it up this season and get our Samhain altar ready. Today I'm going to share some ideas for how to set up your altar for Samhain as well as a little altar tour setup of mine as I take off my Maban altar and get those energies fresh for Samhain. Stay tuned! Welcome to the season of Anya, where together we are building an empowering community of healers and witches and yogis through yoga, magic, and witchcraft. Before we begin, I have a whole video on Samhain, so if you want to know a little bit more about the history of Samhain, as well as some ways you can celebrate Samhain, go ahead and click that video. I will link it above or here. I never quite really know, but we are getting there. So we are just going to go straight into the meat of it. And how can you set up your altar for Samhain? Well, let's start with the obvious. Bust out those old photos, those old memories, those old trinkets, and put them on your altar. This is a great way, which goes without saying, to invite those energies in and just celebrate and show your love and demonstrate your love to the departed. Now, if you don't have a lot of people or maybe anyone that's in your close personal circle, you can always throw some pictures up on your altar of people who have inspired you throughout history. Their stories, their wisdom, their knowledge. Yeah, it's not the same as family, but that's what the season it's about. We are connecting with the spiritual realm and it doesn't always have to mean your direct family. So in either cases, put out some items maybe that they loved or that they would love or that just simply reminds you of who they are or just a little photo of them. Put it on a nice cute little dollar store frame just to make it a little extra pretty. Another great tip, especially if you're working with family, Put your accomplishments on the altar. Did you finally get that job promotion? How about that degree? Did you have a baby? Put all those accomplishments on your altar. Your family, your ancestors would be so proud of you. Share with that. It's not about mourning. It's about celebrating and connecting and the spirit of love, really. Throw some libations on your altar. Wine, rum, tequila, whatever it is. If the departed had a bottle of wine that they really loved and a certain brand, buy it. Put it on your altar, pour that wine in a ceremonial cup, if you will, just a pretty cup if you have one, but make sure to refresh it. You don't want flies in there. You don't want ick in there. Because ideally, when we are setting up our Samhain altars, we want to at least keep it up for a, a season. So at least the month either of October or October through November or whatever you are called to do. With that, I know from experience, I do my best, but I still, I still falter, trust me there. Clean it out, refresh it, and maybe share a glass with them. If you can safely do so, get some of those seven day candles. You can get them at the dollar store. Keep them lit for the entire duration of your altar. This is really nice because it's that constant warm glow. It's that constant inviting of energy. A couple other things you could do would be put some fairy lights on your altar. Keep it lit up for the entire month. This is a great way to invite their energy in and basically say like, hey, the connection is open. I'm here. I'm receiving your messages. What do you have for me? LED candles also work just as great. Now, if you have like a family burial plot or are able to access your family's graveyard dirt, go ahead and grab some, put it on your altar. If you're able to grab enough graveyard dirt, bring it home and plant something in there. Maybe your grandma's favorite flowers or maybe your best friend's favorite house plant or something. What's really nice and symbolic about this is that it invites the energies of uh, life, death, and rebirth. But do not grab graveyard dirt that you are not associated with. Do not do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. Collect responsibly. Some great herbs would be cedar, mugwort, or pine. Cigars or tobacco are also wonderful. Tobacco has been used for ceremonial purposes for so many years. Not only that, our ancestors were smoking tobacco generally around a table with discussion and conversation and livelihood. If you don't smoke, no worries, but put that on your altar and maybe even light it up almost as a sage. The black and milds aren't too bad. I definitely wouldn't recommend a standard cigarette, but you do you do what's called to you. If you tend to collect offerings from nature, if you have any feathers especially, those are great for your Samhain altar. The reason this is good for your Samhain altar is because especially like crows and ravens, they serve as messengers. So what a great way to invite that energy of messages and receiving messages 
from Spirit. Finally, dried or fresh flowers work wonderfully for your Samhain altar. Dried is obviously wonderful because again, it represents the beauty in the dark, the beauty in death, in life and death. If your departed has a favorite flower or favorite plant, honor them by putting that on their altar. So how are you gonna set up your Samhain altar? Oh, don't forget the skulls. The skulls are a great way just to kind of connect with that deathly energy. Yes, I said deathly energy. It is death. That's what we're acknowledging. When we connect with these energies of death, yes, people will call it dark. But at the same time, our lives here on earth are finite. And the more comfortable we can be with the thought that we aren't here forever, we're not immortal, the more comfortable we can be in those thoughts, the better we can make our life here on this earth. Use the lessons of the departed, use their wisdom, use their mistakes as a guiding light to make this life worth living. So comment below, who are you honoring this season? Tell me one happy memory of them or their favorite trinket, their favorite memento, or just anything that reminds you of them. Let's share and inspire one another. All right, everyone, I'm going to do a walkthrough of my altar and how I set it up, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, here is my Samhain altar. I'm going to do a quick little overview, and then I'll go in one by one, or at least on the items that I like, and, uh, you know, the ones that have meaning to me, and just talk about them a little bit. All right, we are going to start with La Strega, the Italian witch that brings me closer to my Italian magic. Anytime I feel really connected with my intuition and with my magic, it always brings me closer to my Italian magic. So she is on my altar, sort of, technically, uh, flying around above my altar, I should say, and uh, she represents the spirit of the Italian witch. She's usually hanging above my altar, but you can never see her, so I wanted to bring her in a little closer, put a little extra attention on her, because I just adore the spirit of this thing. I mean, look at her, come on. Look at that smile. The Italian witch, the strega. She's that, you know, she's like the auntie that sees everything, you know, and that just creates a little magic in the world. You know, usually the one pairing up the young kids together and just doing those little things, has some jokes, has some, has some trinkets for the kiddos, and it, she's just fun all around. I love the strega. All right, and to the left over here, I have my little love spell jar that I have been working on for a while. Yep, still sitting on my altar because I'm just asking my ancestors, pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Can I bring some love and some loving energy into my life? I know it's coming, but a little extra nudge every now and then surely wouldn't hurt. And moving on, ravens have been such a huge messenger for me this season. Uh, scattered throughout my altar, as you can see, I have a ton of raven feathers that I've collected on my spiritual walks this year. So of course, to accompany that, I have this really beautiful raven skull uh, with a beautiful little pentacle etched into it. I don't even know if I ever want to burn this thing. Kind of see it right there. Uh, but just to symbolize, listen to the whispers of spirit, right? Got my pretty skull. Believe it or not, this skull in the center. Dollar store. Oh yeah. Lots of prayer candles. Mortar and pestle, of course. This skull coming up here on the right is also from that kit that I was talking about with the raven skull. And to the right of it is another candle that came up uh, with that kit too. It's really beautiful. It comes in a ceramic little thing, little container. I just don't know if I want to burn it. So that's kind of like my centerpiece, as you can see. <laughs> this is like the, the chalice, if you will, you know, offering for my Italian, my grandparents and my, my Italian ancestors and ancestors of all sorts. This is one of those pieces of china or glassware, I guess, that I never actually use <laughs> ever unless I really want to be fancy or I want to give it up to spirit. And a little fun fact for you, there, that is boxed wine in that glass. You know what? My ancestors would be proud because they came from poverty in the war in Italy and they would not want me opening a 
bottle of wine just for an offering. You know, be frugal, use what you got. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Also connecting me to my Italian heritage is this cute little keychain I got in Napoli, in Naples. We got some, uh, Naples is very much known actually for the witch, the strega, la strega. And um, as you can see here, here are some symbols of good luck. Uh, we got the four leaf clover. Is that actually, that's a five leaf clover? I don't even know. I really only got it for one thing, this keychain, for one reason, and it's right here. Go corno. We can actually see it. See that? There we go. That's supposed to symbolize a devil's horn, actually, and it is a symbol of good luck in Italy. A lot of times in Italy, you will see, especially like with the older tradition, like say my grandparents' generation and older, you'll see a lot of times like the devil's horn hanging for good luck, right? It's kind of like uh, we have a thing called Malocchio, evil eye, same thing, it keeps bad luck away. So I have that. I have a cigar and a pretty little doily in the Italian spirit, of course, you know, gotta, gotta class it up around here if I'm gonna pay homage to my ancestors. Right here I've got a little cauldron of some herbs I want to work with this season. We've got mugwort and bay leaf, definitely great for clairvoyance, especially since the veil is thin this time of year. I've got some rose, uh, rose petals for, you know, to represent a loving connection with my ancestors. And I also have some ground up selenite that I would like to use as well. Can't really see the packaging very well, but it is great for connecting with spirit guides. So I'm going to be using that. I also have some cinnamon. I just didn't have bark and I didn't feel like putting it in here for aesthetic reasons. Because, you know, until you get that altar set up and actually go on, it's kind of like you don't even want to touch it for a while. You just want everything to be oh so pretty. At least I do. Comment if you're an aesthetic witch, please. I can't be the only one, right? <laughs> I've got this oracle deck I've been working with. It's called the Gospel of Aradia. Aradia is a wonderful, amazing Italian goddess known for basically bringing the power back to the people. She is the witch's witch, the queen of the witches, and she is amazing. Of course, I love that she's Italian. I personally really very much connect to her and her energy and her story. So I want to make sure I am working with her energy this season. So there is her deck on my altar. Today I pulled the queen. Look how beautiful that is. And I got some beautiful pumpkins. You can't really see it, but there's a little broom sticking out, pointing out right here. Let me show you. Ah, look how cute that is. From the dollar store. Yep, all this from the dollar store. Beautiful. Oh, there you go. Now it's sticking out a little more, I guess. Perfect. <laughs> and if you saw my Mabon altar video, I got pasta on my altar still. Yes, I thought about take, getting rid of it. I just couldn't. It's just fun. There we go. Let me, get, let me get that aesthetic shot. Not only is it fun, I just really feel drawn to really invoking my Italian ancestry this season. I really need their guidance, their support. And, um, yeah, so I'm keeping it. My Baban altar was only up for a month, so uh, here it stays. I'm gonna have some photos. I'm not gonna put it on the internet, but I'm gonna have some photos of the departed. But here is my altar. I'm gonna try to do like one more shot with the fairy lights on uh, with no lights, but there it is. So let me know what you thought of this video and thank you guys for watching.